What's up, y'all? Welcome to Throttle Only. My name is Nate. This is the 2019 BMW i8 Coupe. Let's check it out. All right, y'all, I'm super excited. I finally get to review a BMW i8. We're gonna start by talking about the front here. So looking at this hood, I love the black and the white contrast here on this vehicle overall, but specifically on this hood because it has very nice vents here in the center. It just gives it a very nice design language. As you make your way up to the front here, there's a beautiful BMW badge there, and it's also surrounded by this blue because this is a hybrid. Then as we make our way down a little bit further, we have beautiful kidney grills here. They are elongated, but it has more of that nice hybrid blue color there. So now looking at the headlights here, they look pretty nice, especially when the daytime running lamps are on. They are pretty elongated as well, and I think that maybe gives it a nice squatted appearance and more aggressive road presence overall. There's also a pretty nice blue hybrid color there that's inside of the headlight itself. And then when you turn on the turn signals or the hazards, it will replace that daytime running lamp in an amber color, which looks very cool. And then just generally in this front fascia here, it just looks so good, so future-esque. I don't even know how to describe it. I just love the contrast between the black and the white. Additionally, the kidney grills have slots at the bottom that allow air to pass through for cooling purposes. And even though this isn't necessarily part of the front exterior styling, it still is interesting what the vehicle will look like when these doors are up. So I'll go ahead and raise them for you. So as we look at the side of the vehicle here, you can see all the crazy contours and body lines continues onto the side here. And you might be able to tell how low this vehicle is as well now that I am squatted down next to it. Now, as we look at these wheels at the front, these are 20 inch wheels, and I think they look pretty good. They do have some chrome accents here on the outside. It does have Pirelli P0 tires on it. There will be two 15 40 size tires here in the front and two 45 40 in the rear. As we make our way back and look at these mirrors, these mirrors are two-tone. They don't have a blind spot monitor or indicator on the inside of the mirror there, but when you flip into reverse, the mirrors will tilt down for you. It also has the indicator on the outside, that which will illuminate in a nice amber color. And moving on back, looking at these doors, if you're looking to open the doors, just slide your hand back behind this little area here, and there's a little push pad. Just push that and then go ahead and lift open. And here's just a quick look at the side profile here with both of the driver and the passenger side doors all the way up. So in my opinion, what gives the i8 a very nice stance, especially from the side here, is the lack of a side skirt. Instead, they have this very nice styling piece where you have this nice hybrid blue color there, and then more of this plastic that will actually wrap underneath the vehicle. It just gives it a very sleek appearance. So since the i8 is a plug-in hybrid, you'll have gas and electric. The fuel door is going to be on the passenger side right here, and you'll have to unlock that using a button by the driver. And then the plug-in area is gonna be on the driver's side in the front. It's a very easy panel, just push the panel and it will reveal the plug-in system there. And the last thing to mention here is this coupe badge that sits right here near the back window. And then you also have this very nice pass-through area here that will allow air to travel all the way back through. It just gives it a very nice design and just makes it look like a spaceship. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get into the driver's side here. Go ahead and open the door. And I'll just show you how difficult it is to get in here. Usually it's easier just to put your butt in first and then move your legs and then go ahead and shut the door. All right, so now that we're at the rear end here, there's a lot going on styling wise and color wise, but up here at the top, this does have a carbon fiber roof and in the very center, there is a shark fin antenna. As we make our way down on the sides of this rear glass here, there are some vents that are functional since this does have a mid engine. Additionally, next to this window here, there's also that very nice winglets or styling pieces here that you can actually see through, which allow air to pass through. And interestingly enough, at the very end of that rear glass, there is just a tiny little deck lid spoiler there. It probably is only like a foot and a half in length, but it is there. Beneath that, there is a beautiful BMW badge there, and then there is also an i8 badge on my side over here. This does have a pretty nice reverse camera, and then as we look at these tail lamps, these tail lamps look absolutely beautiful at night. 
they do illuminate in red. And then when you go ahead and turn on the turn signals or the hazards, there is a separate piece above the tail lamps that will illuminate in amber just where this winglet is, which looks pretty nice. Overall, I think the rear end looks pretty boxy, but I think it looks pretty nice. I mean, it does have a lot of black, white, which is my favorite, and then these very nice blue accents here, since this is a hybrid. Since the BMW i8 is discontinued, how much will a used 2019 BMW i8 coupe cost you in 2024? Well, here is a look at the prices that I could find online. As you can see, the prices range from around $60,000 to $90,000 US dollars. In the front, there is an 11.6 kilowatt battery and a 1.5 liter turbo three cylinder in the rear. Cumulatively, it produces 369 horsepower, 420 pound feet of torque. It has a six speed automatic transmission. It is all wheel drive. And for the fuel economy, it gets a combined rating of 27 miles per gallon using the gasoline engine and 69 miles per gallon E using both the battery and the engine. Overall, the i8 is very light weighing less than 3,500 pounds due to all the carbon fiber. All right, so now let's listen to the exhaust notes here on this i8. There are three different drive modes. There's comfort, eco pro, and sport mode. In the inside, it sounds pretty amazing, but it's a lot of pumped in audio. So I have no idea what it sounds like from the outside, but I couldn't figure out how to get the audio to pump in sport mode, in park or neutral. So I'm just gonna overlay some driving footage. I'm just gonna attach a camera and a mic and we'll see what it sounds like. So since the BMW i8 doesn't have a front trunk, we'll go ahead and look at the rear storage here. We'll have to use the key fob and we'll just push this button right here. And then you can see there, it just lifted up just a little bit. You'll just have to stick your fingers here in this crease and lift up. And of course it is assisted. This does have a small cargo cover right here and you can just go ahead and flip that on back. And then this is what you get here not too much storage here, but you could definitely fit some groceries. And then there is a nice little partition here, right there. And then when you're done, you can go ahead and just flip this on back. And then go ahead and close it. I just grab here. All right, so now let's take a look at the passenger side door panel here. I'll go ahead and open it up using this button right here and flip the doors on up. So I'll have to look at the doors upside down here, but that's okay. So there's some pretty nice materials here. You can see they're a little bit soft touch, but not too much. There's a window control button right there. Very nice carbon fiber on this handle here, all the way throughout. Your unlock and locking controls here. And then of course, this is how you open the door. There's also a Harman Kardon speaker grill right there. And then just in case that electric assisted open button for this door doesn't work, you do have a manual button right here. Now, as we enter the i8 here, there's a nice i8 sill that does not illuminate, but it's very nice. And you might be able to notice there's a lot of carbon fiber here. This is essentially just a giant bucket of carbon fiber. You can see it's just wrapped all the way around. And then even if you look at the doors here, you can see carbon fiber everywhere even at the top here. And there's also a lot in the back as well that I didn't show. But moving on in, there's nice brown leather seats. I really like this blue contrast stitching that it has. And it wraps all the way up. Beautiful blue seat belts as well. And believe it or not, there are actually seats here in the rear not very usable, but they are there just in case you want to use them. There's two cup holders as well. And just to show you how much leg room there is, because I'm not gonna be sitting there. I'm six foot one and my seat is all the way back here. And then I'll go ahead and adjust the passenger seat using the automatic seat controls here to show you a little bit more of the back seat here.
And so there's a better look at some of the room that you might be able to achieve here. If you take the seatbelt off, looks like there's no headrest back there. And there is a little bit of room. So perhaps if your passengers are on the smaller side, they will be able to fit. And additionally on the passenger side down below here, there is a little net for some storage. There's also a nice glove box right here. And then you have some more of this beautiful blue contrast stitching with this kind of brown leather material there. You also have two vents as well. And now opening up the driver's side here, we'll do the same. Put our hand under here and then pull. I'm gonna go ahead and step right on in here. On the left side here, we have all of the lighting controls. Underneath we have rubber pedals as well as a rubber dead pedal. Same automatic seat controls we saw on the passenger side, as well as that nice blue seat belt. Let's go ahead and hop on in. Getting into the i8 is a little bit difficult. I am six foot one. I'll show you what that looks like. And then here's a look at the driver's side door. You have same beautiful carbon fiber material that we saw on the passenger side. All of your window controls are right here, which is just two. And you also have a trunk open button here. And then there's your gas release button. And then of course you can adjust the mirrors as well. And we'll take a look at how plush this material is here. Doesn't have too much give. I think it would be cool if they had some more blue contrast stitching here instead of this tan color. So here's a look at the center console slash armrest area. It's actually very padded on here. And then here it is actually very hard. And then this area is just a little bit padded as well. So I open this on up. There is a little bit of storage in here. There is a USB type A. And then looking at this area right here, there's also just a small amount of storage. There's also a 12 volt adapter there. And then this nice little area right here, you could perhaps put some coins. And as we make our way up, you'll notice there's a lot of beautiful carbon fiber here in the center. And then this very nice black chrome rotary dial that says I8 on the top. It looks super nice. This also will function as a touchpad. So if you're using navigation, you can write your specific directions out instead of navigating to them. Also here, you're gonna have media, menu, navigation, back button, option button. So you do have some nice hard touch buttons there. And then here's your gear selector. Very simple to use. If you wanna use sport mode, you'll just tap it over to this side here. And then you also have your traction off buttons right here, comfort mode, eco pro, your camera button, parking sensors. This is your start and stop button. And then you can also use e-drive if you want to fully be in electric mode. And you do have an electronic parking brake just there. And in front of this shifter here, there is just a small little area for some storage. All of the AC controls are just up from there and they're very simple to read and very easy to use. Here's the heated seat button there for the driver's side. It has three different levels and the passenger also has the same buttons there. And then as you can see, there's a nice LCD display with the climate control, which is very nice and also very nice hard touch buttons that just make it easy to use. And then up from there, you do have a power button here for your media and you can, it's also functions as a volume knob as well. And then all of these, one through eight, you can program to specific things in the vehicle if you want shortcuts. So here's a look at the infotainment screen here. You can see just how small it is. This is a 2019, so that's totally fine, but this is very functional. I don't have any issues with it whatsoever. Here's a look at a size comparison here. This is my phone. It's a 13 Pro Max, and you can see it's pretty much just the same exact size of that screen. But moving on, you do have media, communication, navigation, connected drive, my vehicle, notifications. Under the my vehicle section, this is where, you're, where you'll be able to configure pretty much everything uh, with the vehicle. So if I go to vehicle settings here, you can see on the side here, it says auto e-drive. There's also lighting, doors, intelligent safety, speed warning, all that good stuff. There's also iDrive settings, so you can configure all of that stuff if you'd like to. But the main thing that I use is Apple CarPlay, and it works very well. So now moving on to the steering wheel here. So the steering wheel is wrapped in this kind of brown leather material and does have this nice blue strip right here. In the center BMW logo with some more blue surrounding that. There's some nice silver surrounding and outlying the steering wheel as well. There's paddle shifters on the back. 
On this side here, you have all the cruise control settings, and then here the media controls, as well as the voice and phone button there. So now looking at this digital instrument gauge cluster here, so usually it's configurable. However, this will just reflect whatever drive mode you're in. So currently I am in Eco Pro. If I go ahead and switch it into drive, and then click comfort, you can see it just changes a little bit right there, it just says comfort. I'll switch it into sport mode here, and this is what sport mode looks like. So on the very bottom there, you might notice in blue, it says 19. That is the range for the electric battery right here. And then this is also your fuel indicator. Speedometer is on the left there. And then on the right, you have your RPMs. And then this also has a head up display and that will also change in sport mode. And here's a look at the visors here that flip down. Just have a very tiny mirror here. And you can go ahead and flip these out. And unfortunately, they do not retract back any further than this. Before we take it out for a drive, here's a quick look at the key fob. It's the same key fob that you'll find on the BMW i3. You have an unlock button, lock button. You can also unlock the trunk and an alarm button. All right, so starting out this driving experience with a zero to 60, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it into sport mode. And I'm gonna use the paddle shifters and brake boost a little bit. Here we go. Oh. oh my goodness. The sound coming from this thing just sounds so good. I don't know if it sounds that great from the outside. I haven't looked at the footage just yet, but honestly, I don't really care. This is a plug-in hybrid. It looks like a supercar, even if it's really not that fast. It's still super enjoyable on the inside. Uh, and it's very nice that you can switch to fully electric mode if you want. You just push the E-Drive button down here and it'll go ahead and shift the lever off to the right. And then now you can just use your full electric battery. From what I was getting range wise was anywhere from 20 to 24 miles on completely electric. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in kilometers, but whatever, I just go into my garage, plug it in using the Tesla adapter piece that I bought on Amazon for like 30 bucks. And it just charges in like one or two hours. It's very easy. So currently I have it in Eco Pro mode, so that's gonna be the best mode for uh, getting your miles per gallon. It says that the MPGE on this is 69, which is pretty awesome, but um, using solely the Eco Pro mode, it'll switch between using the engine and the electric battery to maximize your range. I noticed too, while in Eco mode, driving on the freeway is a little annoying to me because this doesn't have lane assist, and so I noticed that the steering wheel is very light and I have to keep moving in and out of the lanes. I'm gonna go ahead and do another zero to 60. There's 80 miles an hour. I mean, this thing really isn't that fast, but it does have more theater in it, which is honestly what I like. It looks really good as well whether on the outside or even just in the inside. So, man, I mean, the practicality of this is pretty much nothing, but you're not buying this for practicality. I think used, you could probably get one of these for around $60,000, $70,000. So, I mean, it's still pretty pricey for being a 2019, um, but nonetheless, if it's something that you want, you can't really argue it because it looks really nice. So as far as the visibility, the visibility is okay in this. Looking over your shoulder, there is a small little window there. I find it easier just to move forward a little bit and look in the mirrors here. And something really nice about looking in these mirrors is you have this nice view of that really intricate spaceship looking design and that rear quarter panel that is one of my favorite design pieces on this. It just looks super nice. And then lastly, as far as seat comfort, I think the seats are pretty comfortable. I think it'd be a little bit nicer if they did have ventilated seats. I just run hot in general, and so I really would prefer ventilated seats. But I mean, there's not much to complain about a car that looks like this and is now discontinued. So, I mean, you kind of get what you get. So anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this review. I had a blast filming this and reviewing this. If you enjoyed the video, at least consider liking the video. If you really loved it, subscribe. That would really help the algorithm and definitely help my channel. But anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. Peace.